How to Legally Access Medical Cannabis in Canada by Drutter, end of May 2015. Our species' first attempts at medicine began long before any written records, when our ancestors ate or smoked herbs to obtain their medicinal compounds. The cannabis plant, in particular, has been used medicinally by many human cultures for thousands of years. In addition to being a fast-growing source of fiber for paper or textiles, oil for plastic or fuel, and protein for food, its flowers are packed with cannabinoids, potent natural compounds with medicinal, recreational, and spiritual purposes. For obvious reasons, cannabis became one of our most important crops. Automobiles were originally made out of it and ran on fuel from its oil. The emerging paper and media empires were threatened by this plant. Over the past few generations, increasingly corrupted Western governments have used propaganda and violence to criminalize cannabis, leading to a rise in power of the oil industry and big pharma, backed by a police state to punish offenders and a mainstream media to manage public opinion. The free flow of information on the internet has helped many of us dispel the myths of reefer madness. People were documenting the healing power of this medicine, and it has helped it become impossible to completely suppress. In 2001, here in Canada, a select few patients began accessing it legally for medical use under a complex and restrictive program called MMAR. That was repealed in 2014, leaving a hodgepodge of unclear regulations as the official policy for Canadians wanting to use it. In 2015, liberty is advancing on this front, and Prime Minister Stephen Harper's conservative regime is losing ground. Health Canada has finally had to admit that cannabis is medicinal, but continues to refuse Canadians' legal access to it. Some landmark court cases are now enabling Canadians to treat and cure their symptoms and illnesses. On screen are some conditions that cannabis has been shown effective in treating or curing. It's also antimicrobial and antioxidant, neuroprotectant, prophylactic, vasodilator, analgesic, bone stimulant, anti-inflammatory, and blood sugar regulator and the research has really just begun. Here's how Canadians can make this happen for themselves, often in under an hour and for absolutely no cost. 1. Choose a dispensary. These are private businesses, and as such, you should select which one you use in much the same way you'd select, say, a pharmacy or market. Do a little research on their strain availability, prices, services, and membership requirements. Many are able to ship the medicine to you anywhere in the country if you can't or don't want to pick it up. I've found about 70 in the Vancouver area alone, and they are starting to crop up all over the country. 2. When you go to your chosen dispensary, bring ID proving you're older than 19 and Canadian. All you need to do other than that is show the dispensary you have a legitimate reason to obtain their medicine. Each defines legitimate reason differently, all the way up to requiring a doctor's prescription. Even in those cases, the dispensary often has a doctor on staff who isn't under the control of the drug companies. Usually for free, the doctor will assess your suitability for medical use of cannabis. When the dispensary is satisfied you have a legitimate reason to use their products, they will make you a member. The bottom line is, Canadians who need safe access to high-quality, affordable weed can now get it. There are dried flower buds for smoking, or better yet, vaporizing, to get the health benefits without the smoke or smell. Medicated baked goods, like cookies, candies, creams, concentrates, capsules. No more poorly grown swag from a gang member down a dark alley. Select from dozens of strains, each with different levels of active ingredients to treat your symptoms. Since this process cuts out the increased costs caused by prohibition, prices are actually cheaper at dispensaries than on the street. And there's no government involvement in this process at any point. They still consider it federally illegal. But we aren't asking for their permission. We are granting ourselves an exemption from prohibition. This is a triumph for the free market and for liberty. The future is exciting, but there's much more to be done. Everything is new and in flux, with responses from the powers that be surely coming soon. Please share this video with anyone it might be useful to, and get involved locally. Some things to remember. No medicine is right for everyone. This video is not legal or medical advice. Do your own research. I believe it accurate to the end of May 2015. Free people don't ask permission to medicate themselves. The war on drugs is a war on us. 
power to the people, and peace.